so that you would see us back and make us feel good. We wouldn't be doing it to be noticed by you or by others. But we just want to be in your presence. We just want you to have your way in our lives. So would you take all that we have done up to this moment and would you take your holy word and the words of this, your messenger this morning. Father, would you continue to have your way moving in our midst. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Over the last few weeks, we have been looking at these topics of being people of compassion, that we would have a heart for other people, that when we, that we wouldn't just see faces, we wouldn't just see crowds, we would see the people. We would actually see a face, and we would know that person, and we would ask and concern ourselves with what's going on in their life. Jesus looked upon the fields. Jesus looked upon the people and He had compassion for them. He prayed that not only that that would be something maybe that we would gather, but He also in that passage that we were looking at in Matthew chapter 9 that we would be a people that would be compelled to go. That there's a harvest out there, that there is work to be done and that we would be compelled to to go, that we would be shoved and pushed to go and to make a difference in that world and into that harvest, the people that are out there. We challenged ourselves to, to become like Jesus in the fact that He came to serve others, not to be served. And that we would try to look at what we do and, and the time that we invest in the things that we do and not necessarily to just try to pile something else onto that list so that we might could pat ourselves on the back and say, hey, look at what else I'm doing. But that we would understand and that we would look at the things that we do and we would strive to be doing those for the purpose of honoring Christ. That we would prioritize the reasons that we do the things that we do. So that it doesn't just become a task. I'm not just going to be up here and do X, Y, Z, whether it's mow the yard or pull flowers out of the... We, pull, don't pull the flowers out of the flower beds. You know, that might be something I would do. That's why I didn't sign that one, all right? But I mean, we don't pull the, the weeds out. It's not that I'm not going to be the one that changes air filters or does this or that. That it's not just a task, but that I teach my class or I lead this or I do that for the cause of Christ and that I'm serving as if I'm serving unto the Lord and not man. And that we would become people of service. It's all about becoming more like Christ. And I don't know that it gets any easier today because today we begin to look at this concept and this idea of to be like Jesus, we must sacrifice. I mean, in just a couple of weeks, we'll celebrate Easter. And in the midst of that celebration has got to be a picture of the sacrifice that Christ made for us. We celebrate an empty cross and an empty tomb. But in the midst of that and prior to that, there was tremendous sacrifice that Christ went through. And so we're going to look at His sacrifice for the next couple of weeks, in not so much this week, but next week and the following week, as we think about what He did for us and how that should impact our lives. There's no greater sacrifice than His sacrifice. It was personal, it was meaningful, it was impactful. And ultimately, if, if we're to be like Jesus, then our sacrifice should have those kind of characteristics as well. So, what is sacrifice? My brother-in-law called this morning and was not feeling well and so wasn't going to be here for his class and said, could I take it? And I said I would. And So we went in there and so they helped me with my sermon this morning. Um, 
really, we just talked about this, this word sacrifice. And I just want you for a moment, what, when you hear that word, what do you think of? As you relate that to yourself, how does that word come to life in you? Sacrifice. If you were to look up the word and try to get a, a feel for what that word means, some of the descriptions and just some of those would be, it's this idea that I would give away or I would give up something that has worth, value, significance to me, it's importance to me, it has importance to me, I would give it away or give it up for God or someone else. That I would make a sacrifice. I would offer to God something that is precious, something that is special, something that has significance to me. Went to a summits, a, a Tulsa summit, which was a small group uh, deal on on Friday night, and there were about eight or nine of us from our church that went as a part of that. One of the things that one of the speakers said is, we have, he put the number 168 up on the screen and said, what does that represent? For those that don't, that's the number of hours you have in a week. And we all have the same amount of of hours in the week and even as it relates to this idea of sacrifice that is really something that's precious because when this 11 o'clock hour is gone we will never get that 11 o'clock hour back it's and we're choosing what to do with that time and so sacrifice to give up something that is that is special or something that has significance even our time is something that we sacrifice and we choose what we're going to do with the time that we have. And the truth is, that'll either be selfish use or it'll be selfless use of time. One is sacrificial, one is self-serving. And so we have to, we have to look at our, at our time. We look at our, our talents, the, the abilities that we have, and what can we do, and how can I use that. But to sacrifice. When we sacrifice or we will sacrifice when we become others focused when we become to look out for the needs of others when we look out into the crowd and we have compassion for them sacrifice will follow if I just look out and see people and I just see kind of a blur that's what happens remember when I take my glasses off just kind of becomes a blur if we just look out and just see a blur and we just see a crowd and we don't see the faces and the hurt, and the concern, and, the, and what's going on, and we, and we don't have a care in the world for what's happening in their life, you won't ever sacrifice for that person. You won't ever do anything giving up something that's precious and meaningful to you for the sake of someone else. It just won't, it won't happen. We, we won't be compelled to go into the world and share the love of Christ if, if we don't have compassion for people. If we, we, won't, we won't want to sacrifice our time. We won't want to sacrifice our energy. We won't want to sacrifice our dollars. We won't want to sacrifice. Well, we, won't, we won't serve. Those, those things, this is all correlated. I mean, and connected in that what, what motivates me to have compassion, what, what compels me to go with confidence in the gospel to a world that needs it, what, what, what moves me to serve and understand that I've been called and equipped to do so is, is this desire to, to be others-focused, to stop looking out for me and, and what's this going to do for me, to stop worrying about and just thinking about myself and to think about others. My sacrifice does not improve my position with Christ. The sacrifice that I make doesn't improve my position with Christ, but it does demonstrate my love for Him. 
And here's, here's what I thought, and, and the class helped me this morning. How many, how many of us, we're going to get to Scripture in just a minute. Y'all ready for that? How many of us as parents have, have made sacrifices? We'd use that word. We've made sacrifices for the sake of our kids. We, we, have, we have not gone and done ABC so that my kid could do this. So that we could do this as, as a family. Or so my kids could have basketball shoes or whatever it may have been. We've, we've, we've sacrificed this for our kids. Yes? Maybe there's sacrifices we've made for our, for our spouse. There's, there's been situations or things that have come up in their life and we have sacrificed what, what we would want to do for the sake of somebody else. And, and we do it for, for them. And, and what, what motivates me to do that? Right? So I could pat myself on the back? Look at me, man. I'm a good dad. Man, Vicky did good, didn't she? I mean, that's, that's not why we do those things. If we do, then shame on There's no sacrifice in that. That's all self-serving. But when I sacrifice in order to do something for my kids, it, it didn't make me more their father. It didn't improve my position with Christ or with them. I, I was their father before I did anything. And I would be their father if I did nothing. It didn't, it didn't improve my position. But it did demonstrate my love. And so when we sacrifice, it's not in order for us to get something. It's not in order for us to, to better improve our standing in society or with God. Because... It's about demonstrating our love for them. And if you don't believe me, then just look at Christ. Christ demonstrated His love for us in that while we were yet sinners, He died for us. I don't know about you, but dying for someone is sacrifice. And He paid that sacrifice for us. So it's, it's, not, it's not to do something to improve my position and to give me a, a better seat in, in the presence of my king. I do what I do and my, ser- my sacrifice is a demonstration that I have a relationship with him and I love him. Or I have a relationship with this person and I love them. Well, it's that perfect stranger. Well, I still have a relationship with them, and I do what I do because I love them. How do I love them? Because Christ's love flows through me to them. So I'm compelled to go. I'm willing to serve. I'm compassionate towards them. One verse of Scripture for you. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. Therefore, brothers and sisters... That's us. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your true worship. Or it might be your reasonable act of service. I urge you, in view of all that God has done for you, His mercies, in view of of all that God has done for you, I urge you, I beg of you, I plead with you. This should be your natural response that you would present your bodies as a living sacrifice. That you would would take your, your mind, that you would take your eyes, that you would take your mouth, you would take your ears, you would take your hands, you would take your feet, you'd take your heart, you'd take your body. 
every piece of who you are and you would surrender that, you would give that to the Lord. That you would dedicate yourself to the Lord. That you would give it away and you would give up control of it. Offered as a living sacrifice. An ongoing sacrifice. I'll give him my body today, but tomorrow it's mine. That's, that's the way we live. Lord, I'll, I'll give you my time on Sunday, but my time is mine come Monday. In fact, preacher, if you don't get done here pretty quick, my time with the Lord's done. We laugh, but some folks, maybe not those of us that are here today, but some folks, we treat our relationship with God that way. And I'm not so sure that that would be defined as sacrifice. Because I'm still trying to keep control of it. And I'm determining what happens. And as long as, God, you can work between 10.45 and I'll even give the preacher till, till noon. But if, if you can work during that time in my life, then you've got it. But at 12.01, it is my time. Present our bodies as a living sacrifice. An ongoing. In fact, that, that idea when he talks about presenting your body... That is actually a once and for all. That's a, Lord, I am doing this that I would offer, that I would present my body. That's a, the picture is, here I am, Lord. I am yours from this day forward forever and ever and ever. Use me how you want to use me. And so every morning, and maybe by noon and maybe by afternoon I need to come back to him and say Lord here I am I tried to take back control of this and I'm presenting myself to you as a living sacrifice this isn't really part of the message either but you're going to get it anyway two living sacrifices pictured for us in the word of God Isaac you're familiar with Abraham and Isaac Isaac is offered on the altar he's tied he, he's a living sacrifice he is there he is willing he is not fighting his father. He is there. And in the moment in which his father is about to take his life, God stops the arm and provides a ram in the thicket for him. And Isaac is a living sacrifice, a picture of presenting and, and surrendering his life to his father. And the other is obvious as well. It's Christ himself offered himself as a living sacrifice. He died, was placed in the grave, and three days later rose again. He is the living sacrifice picture for us. That we would present ourselves as a living sacrifice. It would be holy and pleasing to the preacher. It'd be, no, that's not what it says, right? Holy and pleasing to the world no it'd be holy and pleasing to God for this is your spiritual act of worship this is your reasonable service this is your true worship sacrifice last week I asked us the question what have we done for the Lord lately today I might ask us a question what have we sacrificed lately what is what is sacrifice what does it look like in our lives and it got me to thinking about our missionaries we have a, a little over 5,000 missionaries that serve in the United States and North America and the provinces that are um, attached there too what sacrifice look like to them what have they done what is a picture of of some folks that you and I may not ever meet 
but they're serving and they're doing something for the Lord that it's a picture of sacrifice. They've left what is comfortable. They've left what is convenient. Because God broke their heart. Compassion compelled to serve and to sacrifice. So when you open this book this week and this little flyer and you begin to pray for Rob and Lisa Warren in Madison, Wisconsin, you're going to learn that they live in a college town, that God moved them from where they were to where they are, gave them a heart and a concern for college kids, and they moved into a into a community, the challenges that they faced, but they willingly offered their bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord to be used by Him. In fact, why don't we meet them? Can we watch that video? Let's, let's meet the Warrens. Yes. Here we go. When I think about what a movement looks like for us, it's it's really this. You know, it's packing up a truck, it's boxes, it's tape. For us, it was it was moving to the college town of Madison, Wisconsin. We're super passionate about seeing young people meet Jesus and then have that change the entire trajectory of their life. So what better place to do it than here? We are being launched into a context of 43,000 college students. When you think about leaving family, when you think about leaving friends and start a new thing and struggling through all that, man, we, we gotta get there. We just have to get to the people that are going to be shaping our culture and our country in the years to come. We have students that have come here to help us from across the country to plant and because they believe in, in the mission of God and they believe they're a huge part of it. Really the engine, if you will, of church planting is college students. And if you can give them a church planting vision for the rest of their life, their perspective on life and family and job is going to be around the, the Great Commission. And that vision is what drove us to uproot our lives and to move here to Madison. The crazy thing is, we're not that unique. We're part of a movement. The reality is, is that there's hundreds of other church planters on campuses all across North America, just like us. This is way bigger than just us, because just about in every place there's college students, there's planters. You think about just Ohio and Iowa, Alabama, the West Coast and California, there's just people going and planting churches to reach what used to be some of the most unreached people in America. Everyone can have a collegiate reaching vision. When you give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, you're really giving with the hope to change the world. That this gift makes this movement possible to millions of college students around this country. So it's families like them that give us a picture, a present day picture of, of folks that are willing to leave their familiar surroundings, leave the comfort and convenience, leave their possessions to be like Jesus. To, to go and to, to try to bring hope to a world that is hopeless. That's, that's, that's what we're to be about doing. Folks that are fulfilling the mission, making a difference, willing to sacrifice stems from a broken heart a desire to go a confidence in the gospel a desire to make a difference a desire to serve and it really boils down to a to a word the reason 
that a mom sacrifices for her kids. The reason that a husband sacrifices for his wife. The reason that grandparents sacrifice for their grandkids. Is love. The the desire, the reason, is, is a love. Sometimes a love that's hard to put into words, it's a love that people don't understand. But it's love. That He would urge us that we would offer our bodies as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing unto God, that is our reasonable, it's our true act of worship. That we would do it because of love. A love for college students. Bless them. (laughs) Thank the Lord for them. I think of our friends, Dan and Amber Suiza, that are pastor and church planners at Connect Church in Calgary. They left Florida to go to Canada. Sunny Florida, snow-capped mountains of Canada. I mean, they left... They left family. They left things in order to... And you, you've met them. You, you would never see in them an ounce of, of remorse or regret or anything for what they've done. The, the sacrifice for them is mo- motivated for something that God stirred within them. It's a love for the people of Calgary that just got a hold of their heart and makes them who they are today. And so as we think about sacrifice, what or how is the Lord tugging on you to demonstrate that you're offering your body, your heart, your hands, your mouth, your life as a living sacrifice to display your love for Him and your love for others. Maybe. Maybe it'll be financial. Maybe in the sense of our missionaries, it would be to take this envelope and sometime over the course of the next few weeks that you would give. And it'd be a sacrifice because you're going to give up that, I don't even know what you get at Starbucks, but whatever that might be. For me, it's the dollar drink at McDonald's, you know, or whatever. Because $5 would provide a bus ticket for a missionary to be able to travel the bus line for the day to get over to where he needs to to minister to a family in need. I mean, it might be, might be $300 that would give training to a missionary couple, give them the materials and the training that they need to be able to do the work that God's called them to do where they are. I mean, it could be a whole list of things, and I could run through a bunch of those, but... $25 is a meal for an unreached, to have a meal with an unreached person. $500 to do a neighborhood outreach event in a community to reach them with the gospel. I don't know. But it'd be a sacrifice because I'm going to have to take and not do something in order to, to do this. We give sacrificially here. This is It's not just about that, but... I. You need to know. We as a church just sent, or are sending, I'm not sure if it's in the mail or headed in the mail this week, a check for $1,600 to Connect Church in Calgary because the Lord opened an opportunity for them to get a place. They meet on Sundays. They come in and set up a movie theater every Sunday and have church and they tear it down and they do church in movie theaters. They do children's ministry out in the lobby and in, in the front of movie theaters on the ground, right in front of the big screens. And every week they're setting that up and tearing that down, and that's going to continue. But all of their ministry happened out of the house of the pastor and his wife. All of their practices, all of their church stuff had to be stored somewhere that the theater didn't give them room for, and it was all stored there. Every meeting had to happen there or at a restaurant or somewhere because they didn't have an office. And somebody in their church gave them a house at their cost, rent-wise, um, or their payment. And so our church, we, we sent a check for one month 
for that house for the next year so that they got 12 of their churches that partner with them to support that so that they can have time to work that into their budget. But now they have a place to have, and they're presently using it. It's called their Connect Hub. It's where they do all of their ministry stuff. They can have their staff meetings there, their praise team practice. They don't have the luxury of coming up to church to, to practice for the worship time. They've been doing that in the basement of the pastor's house. Now they've got their house back. Their garage was their storage facility for all of their giveaway things and all their summer activities and all of that stuff. And now they have a place to house that. So we, we give, through our sacrificial giving even here to the church, we gave in a sacrificial way to a, to a ministry that's happening up there. And, and you just need to know that. That's, that's the things that we do. So, so your, your sacrifice might be, might be financial, but it might be your time. And you just need to let that soak for a moment. And, and what is it that I might need to do in serving, helping, and investing in other people? It might be your talents, your abilities. How is God tugging on you to be a living sacrifice for Him? What are you doing to bring hope to the hopeless? as our missionaries are around not just North America, but literally around the world. What are you doing to say to Jesus, I love you? What are you doing to, to express your love for Jesus? To say, you're, you're, you're worthy of my sacrifice. What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing to say to others, you're worth it? You're worth the sacrifice of my fill-in-the-blank, of my time, of my talent, of my treasure. You're, you're worth it. I urge you, I beseech you, I beg of you that you would present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. For this is your true act of worship. Let's stand together. Father, would you take your word this morning, the example of people in the scripture, the example of these missionaries, as we pray for them this week, as we learned a little bit about one of them. Father, just be mindful of what people that are sacrificing what it looks like. The difference that it could make. And then, Father, would you help us to be like your son and even pattern ourselves like others that are following your son and that we would be people of compassion a compelling confidence, people of service, people of sacrifice. I pray it in Jesus' name. Caught up in